You can't hide behind your apron forever, Doreen. The world keeps spinning, whether you're cooking or not. Maxine's words cut through the bakery's warm, buttery aroma like a knife. She eyed me over the rim of her coffee cup, a mix of concern and frustration etched across her face. I sighed, slipping another tray of chocolate chip cookies into the oven. I'm not hiding, Maxine. I'm living a simple, peaceful life, just the way I like it. It had been three years since my husband Frank passed, leaving me to manage the family bakery alone. At 62, content nights watching reruns of Golden Girls and perfecting my triple fudge brownie recipe suited me just fine. Peaceful? Maxine snorted, more like burying your head in the sand. I bristled at her tone, but said nothing. She was my dearest friend, and I knew her heart was in the right place, even if her delivery could use some work. Your son just got married, Doreen. She fixed me with a pointed stare. Doesn't that merit a little excitement in your life? My lips twitched at the mention of Cole and his new bride, Lee. At thirty-two, I'd been overjoyed when he finally found a woman to settle down with. Though their courtship had been brief, Leah seemed caring, if a touch high-strung. Of course I'm happy for them, I said mildly, pulling a fresh, ba fresh batch of cookies from the oven. But Cole's a grown man now. My job as his mother is done. The words tasted like ashes in my mouth. Of course my job wasn't done. A mother's work was never over. But after devoting the better part of three decades to caring for him, I figured I'd earned a bit of peace and quiet. Maxine opened her mouth, no doubt to argue, when the bakery's front door flew open. I turned, caught off guard by the panicked look on Cole's face. Mom, he gasped, his eyes wide and fearful. I need to talk to you. Now. If my heart stuttered in my chest at the dread in his voice. Exchanging a worried glance with Maxine, I quickly untied my apron and ushered my son into the small office at the back of the bakery. The moment the door closed behind us, Cole seemed to deflate, slumping into the tattered armchair in the corner. "'It's Lee,' he said hoarsely. "'I—I I think I've made a terrible mistake.' I stilled, feeling as if the world had tilted on its axis. This was what I'd feared from the moment he'd brought Leah home, that the sweet— eager to please girl he'd fallen for was not what she seemed. Silently I pulled up a chair across from Cole. This called for more than pastries and placating words. My son needed me, truly needed me, for the first time in years. With a fortifying breath I asked the question I'd been avoiding for months. Tell me everything, son. Cole took a shuddering breath, his shoulders slumped in resignation. I don't know where to start, Mom. It's like I've been living a lie this whole time. I reached across and gave his hand a reassuring squeeze. From the beginning, honey. Leave nothing out. He nodded, jaw clenched. You know how Leah used to work at that high-end boutique downtown? Well, I thought she'd quit when we got married to focus on the home life, but it turns out she was fired for stealing from the cash register. My heart sank at the revelation. Theft was an ugly crime, and not at all in keeping with the modest, church-going girl Cole had introduced me to. Go on. I urged gently. Cole dragged a hand over his face, suddenly looking decades older than his thirty-two years. That was just the start of it. The lying, the ridiculous spending on designer clothes and vacations we couldn't afford, I didn't want to see it at first. Lie has a way of making me feel like I'm the crazy one, you know? I felt a flare of anger toward this woman who had so thoroughly deceived my kind-hearted son. Did she at least hold down a job to pay for these luxuries of hers? Cole barked out a hollow laugh. Get this, she told me she was working part-time at a salon downtown, bringing in just a little extra income for us. Turns out it was all bull. She hasn't worked a day in over a year. My hands clenched into fists. Then how? She's been siphoning money from my accounts, Cole said, his voice cracking, draining me dry to bankroll her spending, her lazy days at the spa, the whole nine yards. I only found out when the bank called about an overdue payment on a credit card I never even knew existed. White-hot fury coursed through me at the thought of this deceitful woman taking advantage of my son's hard-earned money. But it was quickly doused by the look of utter devastation on Cole's face. The worst part? He whispered, meeting my gaze with hollow eyes. I think she's been carrying on with her bastard ex the whole time. I surged to my feet without thinking, my harsh words exploding into the cramped office air before I could stop them. That conniving, worthless snake, 
How dare she treat you this way after everything you've done for her? I'll wring her lying neck, I swear it on my last breath. Cole recoiled from my outburst, eyes widening in shock. Realization slammed into me then. This was the precise reaction Leah had been aiming for all along. To drive a wedge between us, feeding the belief that she was just a helpless victim of an overbearing mother-in-law. Slowly, I lowered myself back into the chair, calming breaths helping to subdue my volatile temper. When I finally spoke, it was with an eerie sense of determination. We can't let her win, Cole. Not like this. He stared at me, searching my face. What do you mean? I leaned forward, holding his gaze. It's time we fought fire with fire, if your wife wants to play dirty. I allowed a grim smile to spread across my lips. Then dirty is exactly how we'll play. I took a deep breath and knocked firmly on Cole and Lee's apartment door. My heart was pounding, but I was determined to keep my composure. This had to be handled delicately. After a moment, the door swung open to reveal Leah, perfectly coiffed as always in an expensive-looking silk robe. Her heavily made-up eyes narrowed when she saw me. Doreen, she said flatly, to what do I owe this? Pleasure. I mustered a tight smile. Good morning, Lee. I was hoping I could have a word with you, in private. I saw the flash of irritation cross her features before she paid could school them back into a mask of feigned politeness. Of course. Come in. Leah led me into the living room, all plush couches and fashion magazine spreads. So different from the cozy home I'd envisioned for my son. What's this about? She asked brusquely, crossing her arms as she faced me. If it's about that kitchen remodel idea of yours, I've already told Cole a million times. It's not about that. I interrupted, keeping my tone even. This is about your treatment of my son. The lying. The deception regarding money. Lee's heavily mascarad eyelashes fluttered in obvious shock before her face contorted into an ugly sneer. I see Cole's been running that mouth of his again. Typical. My temper flared at her dismissive attitude, but I forced it back down. I wouldn't be baited in losing control. Not yet. He told me everything, Leah, I said quietly. About your jobs that don't exist— the secret credit cards and tremendous debt you've racked up in his name, even your indiscretions with your ex-boyfriend. Something dark flickered across Leah's face before she threw her head back with a peal of mocking laughter. Oh, spare me the self-righteous routine, Doreen. Your precious Cole isn't quite the angel you think he is. I bristled at the blatant insult to my son's character, but remained silent as Leah stalked closer, her voice low and venomous. You want to know what he really is? A pathetic, spineless mama's boy who's let you control every aspect of his life for over thirty years. I'm just doing him a favor by finally cutting the apron strings for good. Her words were like physical blows, each one hitting harder than the last. I opened my mouth, a blistering retort on my lips, but Leah plowed relentlessly forward. Consider this your only warning, you miserable, bitter hag. You come between me and my husband again. I'll make sure Cole never lays eyes on your wrinkly face again. Maybe then he can grow a pair without your meddling. I could barely process her vicious tirade through the roaring in my ears. This, this wasn't the sweet, soft-spoken girl Cole had fallen for. This was a vicious, soulless harpy, devoid of any conscience or empathy. Somehow I found my voice, mustering every ounce of conviction I could. You're right about one thing, I said, holding Leah's smoldering glare. This won't be over until Cole is free from your clutches forever. And mark my words. I leaned in until our faces were mere inches apart. That's a promise. With that, I turned on my heel and stormed from the apartment, my head spinning. If Leah thought she could threaten me into submission, she had another thing coming. The gloves were officially off. I stormed out of Cole and Leah's apartment building, hands shaking with barely contained fury. How dare that vile woman speak to me that way? After everything I've sacrificed for my son over the years. As I climbed into my car, Cole's anguished face from our conversation yesterday flashed in my mind. The despair in his eyes, the slump of his shoulders under the immense weight of Leah's deception. It was an image seared into my brain. My sweet, trusting boy had been taken for a ride by a master manipulator. But I refused to let her win not while there was still breath in my body. The drive back to the bakery passed by in a blur. I was only vaguely aware of pulling into the lot and cutting the engine. My mind was racing, plotting my next moves. 
Well, how did it go? I looked up to see Maxine hurrying towards me from the bakery entrance, brow creased with concern. Right. I'd told her about my plan to confront Leah before going in this morning. Like you'd expect dealing with the she-devil herself, I muttered, sliding out of the car. She's even more unhinged than we thought, Max. Venomous doesn't even begin to cover it. Maxine's frown deepened as she fell into step beside me. I'm so sorry, Doreen, but you did the right thing trying to talk some sense into her. I barked out a harsh laugh. Talk sense into that black heart? Not a chance. She's got Cole completely snowed, made him believe her lies about being the real victim here. Maxine shook her head in disgust. What a piece of work. But don't let her shake your resolve, Han. That girl's not long for this world if you've got anything to say about it. A faint smile tugged at my lips at my friend's steely confidence. You're damn right about that. I'm not about to let that hellcat drag my son down any further. We reached the bakery doors and I paused, looking Maxine square in the eye. In fact, I'm just getting started. This is war, plain and simple. Maxine's eyebrows shot up. You sound like you've got something brewing in that devious mind of yours, Doreen. Do tell. Simple, I said grimly. We're going to gather up as much ammunition as we possibly can on that wretched snake. Financials, phone records, proof of her dalliances, the whole nine yards, build an absolutely airtight case against her. Understanding dawned across Maxine's features. So you can put the fear of God in her once and for all, I nodded curtly. Precisely. I'm going to back Leah into a corner, leave her with no choice but to come completely clean with Cole and face the consequences. Just see if she tries threatening my family again after that. Pushing through the bakery doors, I felt a steadiness wash over me, a sense of purpose and determination I hadn't felt in years. Leah may think she had me outmatched, but she was sorely mistaken. When it came to protecting the ones I loved most, I didn't just fight. I played to win at all costs, and woe be unto anyone who threatened my own. They were about to face the full, unbridled force of a mother's wrath. You're sure about this? I fixed Maxine with a steely gaze as we sat across from each other in her cramped dining room. Spread out on the table between us were phone records, bank statements, and even a couple of grainy photographs, the first fruits of our investigation into Leah's misdeeds. Of course I'm sure, I said firmly. Cole deserves to know the full truth about who he's married to, no matter how ugly it gets. Maxine worried her lower lip, shuffling through the damning paperwork. I'm not disagreeing with the motive, Doreen, but some of this stuff. She trailed off, shaking her head slowly. It paints one hell of an unsavory picture. My chest tightened as I remembered the cold, hard evidence we'd uncovered, like the phone records showing dozens of calls to a number traced back to Leah's smarmy ex-boyfriend, Rick, or the bank statements detailing repeated cash withdrawals in the thousands from Cole's accounts, far exceeding any reasonable personal expenses. And then there were the photographs, grainy shots taken by a private investigator of Leah and Rick, entering a downscale motel together, their bodies pressed entirely too close for former flames. My stomach had roiled at the sight, mind reeling at the utter disrespect and betrayal. Unsavory doesn't begin to cover it, I said, mouth set in a grim line. That deceitful snake has been lying, cheating, and stealing from my son in broad daylight, using him as a veritable ATM to fund her tawdry affair and lazy lifestyle. Maxine sighed, leaning back in her chair. And you're sure Cole had absolutely no idea any of this was going on? I know he can be a bit naive at times. A muscle ticked in my jaw at her words. It was true. Cole's kind, trusting nature had always been a double-edged sword. He saw the good in everyone, often to his own detriment. Like his serial cheater father who'd abandoned us when Cole was just a boy. Or the string of girlfriends in college who took advantage of his generosity until I finally knocked some sense into him. I shook my head, cursing the cruel fates that seemed to constantly put my son in the crosshairs of vile opportunists. Not a clue. He's hurting, Max, lost and utterly confused why his new bride would betray him like this. I won't let that witch keep manipulating him a day longer. Maxine held up her hands in surrender. Hey, I'm not judging here. You know I've got your back through anything, thick or thin. Her gaze hardened as she pulled a crumpled envelope from the depths of her robe pocket. Which is why I brought these, too. She upended the envelope, spilling out a stack of glossy photos 
that I immediately recognized with a jolt of nausea. Several more shots of Leah and Rick in various states of undress, this time at what looked like a seedy club. Jackpot, Maxine said with grim satisfaction. Got these from my buddy who runs the Foxy Box down on Chestnut. Apparently, our girl Leah has been a regular for months, draped all over that slimy ex like a wannabe porn star while your boy Cole works his behind off. White-hot rage lanced through me as I stared at the incriminating photos. This was it, the final nail in Leah's treacherous coffin. There'd be no more denials, no more lame excuses about misunderstandings. Reaching out with a trembling hand, I slowly gathered up the graphic evidence until it was cradled against my chest like a newborn babe. Unbidden, tears pricked at the corners of my eyes as the gravity of what I was about to do washed over me in waves. This was the point of no return the Rubicon that would irrevocably change my son's life forever, for better or worse. But as I studied the sordid images, taking in every graphic detail of Leah's callous betrayal, my resolve solidified into an unshakable cobra of cold, hard steel. It's time, I said in a low-clipped voice, meeting Maxine's concerned gaze, to put an end to this once and for all. I took a deep, steadying breath as I pulled up to Cole and Leah's apartment building. My knuckles were white from gripping the steering wheel, the envelope containing the incriminating evidence feeling like a lead weight on the passenger seat. This was it. The moment of truth when I'd finally pull back the curtain on Leah's cesspool of deceit and betrayal once and for all. As I strode towards the building entrance, I felt an eerie sense of calm wash over me. This wasn't about petty revenge or inflating my ego, it was about making things right restoring justice, even if it meant inflicting some temporary pain on my son. Cole deserved to know the ugly truth about the viper he'd brought into his life. And Leah deserved to reap what she'd so insidiously sown. I knocked firmly on their apartment door, envelope in hand. After a moment, I heard shuffling footsteps before the door cracked open, revealing Cole's tired, drawn features. Mom, he said in surprise, what are you doing here? We need to talk, Cole, I said, keeping my voice low and even. May I come in? It's important. Cole hesitated for the briefest of moments before swinging the door open to admit me. As I stepped inside, I caught sight of Leah lounging on the sofa, idly flipping through a magazine. She arched one perfectly groomed eyebrow at me, a sneer already curving her ruby lips. Well, well, if it isn't Mother Dearest, back for another lecture. I ignored her jibe, turning to face Cole fully. Son, what I'm about to show you won't be easy to see, but you need to know the complete, unvarnished truth about your wife and the depths of her depravity. Cole's brow creased in confusion. What are you talking about? This. With a steady hand, I upended the envelope, spilling out the incriminating photos and documents across the coffee table in one fell swoop. Lee's mocking expression instantly transformed to one of abject horror. No, she gasped, snatching up one of the glossy photos. How did you get these? A little initiative goes a long way, I said coolly. Take a good look, Cole. See for yourself the kind of lying, cheating gutter trash you've married. My son's eyes went wide as he absorbed the graphic photos. The realization of Lee's sordid affair and repeated betrayals washing over his handsome features like a physical blow. I yearned to gather him in my arms but held back, letting him process everything for himself. Eventually, Cole lifted his stricken gaze to mine. Mom, I, I don't understand. Oh, I think she understands just fine, Leah spat, rising to her feet in a fury. She turned towards Cole, lips curled in an ugly snarl. I've been having a little fun on the side, so what? She sneered, like being chained to a weak, pathetic mama's boy like you is a real turn-on. You're lucky I even stuck around this long instead of, instead of taking you for every penny. The vicious words seemed to hang in the air like a rank stench. I saw the exact moment my son's heart shattered into pieces inside his chest, all the light and hope draining from his eyes. My own vision went blurry with furious tears. Before I could form a response, Leah rounded on me with bared teeth. This is all you're doing, isn't it, you bitter old hag? You couldn't stand to see your precious baby boy cut his apron strings once and for all. I stepped forward until our faces were mere inches apart, every protective maternal instinct roaring to life. You're damn right it was me, I hissed, low and dangerous. I promised I wouldn't let you continue poisoning my son's life with your cancerous lies and greed. 
Well, start packing your things, sweetheart, because this game is over. You've lost. Leah opened her mouth, a fresh torrent of vitriol no doubt ready to spew forth. But something in my eyes must have given her pause. With an incoherent shriek of rage, she whirled away and stormed towards the bedroom, slamming the door behind her. As the reverberations faded, I moved to Cole's side and gently placed my hands on his shoulders. He was trembling faintly, staring down at the scattered evidence of his sham marriage. "'I'm so sorry, my boy,' I murmured, brushing away the tears streaking his cheeks. "'But you deserve to know the truth, no matter how ugly. You deserve so much better.' Cole lifted his gaze to mine, raw anguish swimming in his eyes. In that moment, I saw my little boy staring back at me, the sweet, sensitive child who'd idolized his father before the bastard took off, the young man who'd had his heart shattered into pieces time and again. "'What do I do now, Mom?' he whispered, utterly bereft. I pulled him into a fierce embrace, cradling his head against my shoulder as I had so many times before. "'You let it all out.' I said fiercely. And then we burn that godforsaken part of your life to the ground. Together. The days following my explosive confrontation with Leah were a hectic blur. Lawyers were consulted, custody of our beloved dog Biscuit was hotly debated, and paperwork for the divorce proceedings was filled out with pens that seemed dipped in acid. Through it all, Cole remained by my side in a daze, the life he thought he knew lying in smoldering ruins around him. Gone was the excited newlywed with a bright future ahead, replaced by a hollow-eyed specter simply going through the motions. I ached to see my son so utterly devastated, but a larger part of me couldn't help but feel relieved. As painful as this process was, it meant Leah's venomous grip was finally loosening for good. "'You're doing the right thing, Cole,' I told him one evening as we sat together on the battered couch, the turning gears of the old grandfather clock my only company." As hard as it is to accept, she never truly loved you. Just the idea of the life you could provide. Cole didn't respond at first, continuing to stare unseeingly at the framed photos displayed on the coffee table. Shots from happier times, when his grinning face was accompanied by the bright-eyed vision he thought was his soulmate. Eventually, he turned to face me, etched lines of misery carving canyons around his mouth and eyes. I know you're right, Mom. Logically, I know you are he said in a hoarse tone. But it doesn't make this hurt any less, you know? Having all those memories, those intimate moments we shared just... He trailed off, shaking his head bitterly. It was all a goddamn lie. I felt my heart shatter anew, seeing the depth of his torment. Wordlessly, I reached over and enveloped his calloused hand in my own, giving it a tight squeeze. Love is never a lie when it's real, sweetheart, even if it burns bright and fades away over time. What you two had... I searched for the right phrasing. It was an illusion, spun from Leah's selfish need to possess, not cherish. Cole squeezed his eyes shut as if to damn the tidal wave of anguish threatening to spill forth. An illusion, he repeated in a sandpaper rasp. One incredibly vivid, beautiful illusion. We lapsed into silence as the weight of everything he'd lost, everything that had been so brutally ripped away, hovered between us. After several long moments, Cole's eyes flared open shining with a sudden urgent intensity. Mom, please, he entreated hoarsely. Tell me there's a light at the end of this nightmare, that the pain of feeling so, so gutted and worthless will pass someday. His voice cracked like spun glass. I can't keep living like this, just existing as a husk. I won't make it. My heart shattered anew at the rawness of his despair. Gathering every ounce of motherly conviction, I grasped his face firmly between my hands and met his swimming gaze head on. "'Listen to me, Cole, and listen well,' I said, keeping my voice low and controlled, despite the roiling tempest within. "'What you're feeling now is entirely normal, after being so cruelly deceived. You poured your heart and soul into loving someone, only for them to trample it into the dirt like garbage. Tears were streaming freely down his cheeks now, but he made no move to pull away or, or break eye contact.' I pressed on, undeterred. But that crushing agony you feel, it won't last forever, Cole. It can't, because you are so much stronger and braver than you give yourself credit for. My son survived losing his father when he was just a boy. He rebuilt his life from the ashes and thrived, and damn it, he will rise again from this, like a majestic phoenix from the flames. I pulled him into a fierce hug then, 
rocking us back and forth as I had when he was just a little boy. You will get through this darkness, my love, and your wretched excuse for a wife? I gave a humorless chuckle. Well, let's just say Karma is an irrefutable bitch. She hasn't escaped unscathed either. Cole trembled violently in my arms, unspent tears and shuddering gasps racking his body as the dam finally broke. I simply held him tighter, letting him purge every ounce of grief and betrayal in racking waves. And as his sobs finally began to ebb to sporadic hitches, I pressed a tender kiss to the crown of his head and murmured the solemn vow that had always sustained us. I'll never abandon you, Cole. A mother's love is forever, come what may. The cloying scent of fresh paint mingled with the sugary aroma of baked goods as I put the finishing touches on the bakery's grand reopening. It had been over two months since the explosive confrontation that blew the lid off Leah's deceptions, two months of heartache, turmoil, and more than a few sleepless nights. But we had persevered through the darkness, Cole and I. The divorce proceedings, though bitter, had ultimately been swift and decisive once the full extent of Leah's treachery came to light. Cole was awarded full custody of Biscuit, the car, and enough settlement money to stay afloat while he got back on his feet. As for his traitorous ex-wife, let's just say her tawdry deeds and love of the finer things hadn't endeared her to the judge. She'd slunk away from the courthouse in disgrace with little more than the overpriced clothes on her back. I shook my head in disgust, carefully wiping down the bakery's front counter for what felt like the hundredth time. Lee didn't deserve another passing thought, not when Cole was finally emerging from the shadow of her poisonous influence. You keep buffing that wood and we'll be able to see our reflections in it, Mom. I turned with a start to see Cole grinning at me from the doorway, Biscuit cradled contentedly in his arms, a sight which, mere weeks ago, would have been unthinkable. You know how I am with first impressions, I said lightly, tossing the rag into the bin. I want this place looking spick and span for the first customers. Cole sauntered over, eyeing the warm, buttery tones of the newly renovated bakery with an appreciative gleam. You've really outdone yourself. It looks amazing. I waved him off. Pish posh. I just wanted to put a fresh coat of paint on things, literally and figuratively. Turn over a new leaf, you might say. My gaze landed on Biscuit's furry head peeking out from the crook of Cole's elbow. Speaking of new leaves, how's my favorite co-pilot doing today? Mm -hmm. Biscuit's tail thumped energetically at the sound of my voice as I reached over to scratch behind his velvety ears. Cole's face fairly glowed with paternal pride and affection as he watched our interaction. We're doing just great, aren't we, buddy? Seems like Biscuit's thriving even more than I am out there in our new place. My eyebrows arched at this. Is that so? Do tell, Mr. Bachelor. I hadn't pried much about Cole's living situation following the move out. I wanted to give him space to spread his wings in the wake of being so confined for those cursed two years with Leah. To my surprise, a faint blush colored Cole's cheeks as he averted his eyes almost... shyly? Well, it's nothing too wild, honest. I've just been spending some time with this girl I met while out on a walk with Biscuit a few weeks back. Now it was my turn to raise an intrigued eyebrow. Oh, do go on. Cole cleared his throat, bouncing Biscuit absent-mindedly in his arms. Her name's Ava. Really sweet, loves animals, works over at that craft store by the mall. Despite his nonchalant tone, I could detect the hint of warmth entering his voice as he spoke about this mystery woman. My heart felt fit to bursting at the thought of my son's first romantic foray after his scorched-earth divorce. And? I prodded gently badly stifling a grin. Is she nice? Cole's flush deepened, but his lips twitched with a smile. Yeah, Mom, she's nice. More than nice, actually. He hesitated, seemingly struggling with how to put his feelings into words. You know, when I'm with Ava, I don't know, I can breathe easier, if that makes any sense. Like there aren't all these expectations or bars to clear constantly. She just lets me be me. My smile stretched into a full-blown grin at his boyish, almost bemused tone. Hearing him speak so tenderly of a woman again after the Leah debacle made my heart swell with hope. This time would be different. I could feel it in my very bones. Well, you'll simply have to introduce this remarkable young lady to your dear old mother sometime soon, won't you? I said lightly, giving Biscuit's chin one final scratch. 
I'd love to meet the woman who's managed to make you smile like that again. Cole's expression sobered, but his eyes remained tender and warm. You really want to meet her? Of course I do, silly boy, I chuckled, rounding the counter to draw him into a fierce hug, biscuit and all. I want to meet anyone who brings that look of peace to your face after everything we've survived. I felt him relax into my embrace, tension seeping from his shoulders. Thank you, Mom. You know, for... Well, everything. I patted his back firmly before releasing him. No thanks necessary, son. That's what we do in this family. We persevere, no matter what hell is thrown our way. And maybe... I felt my own grin soften into a warm smile. Just maybe we finally paid our dues, and nothing but blue skies are on the horizon. A melodic jingling cut through our moment, our moment as the bell above the bakery's front door sounded, signaling our first customers of the day. Cole and I shared one final, knowing look before he scooped up Biscuit and made for the kitchen. With a contented sigh, I turned to face the smiling couple, fresh-baked scones and a full pot of coffee at the ready. Whatever the future held, I knew one thing for certain. My family was whole again. And this time, not a damn thing was going to tear us apart.